Hey guys, in this video, the lovely Mr. B is going to take you through working out the circumference of circles. Now this starts off really, really nicely, and then through the 15 examples in the video, gets increasingly harder. You can jump into this video wherever you want to, start an easy one and work your way through, or start with the hard ones and challenge yourselves. Once you've finished working with this video, then over on site, there are thousands more questions just waiting for you. going to find the circumference of circles and by circumference we just mean the line around the outside of a circle uh, you could imagine it as perhaps the perimeter of a circle so there is a formula for this and the formula is that the circumference which we can call c is equal to pi multiplied by the diameter of the circle so let's talk about the different parts of that formula in question one. So firstly, I'm just going to highlight the circumference of the circle in pink. And so you can see it's a line that goes all the way around the outside of the circle. Again, very similar to perimeter, but it's got a different name because it's curved. The next thing to talk about is the diameter. So we've done the circumference in pink. The diameter, which I'm going to highlight in green, that is a line that goes all the way across the circle. And a key thing here is this line, it's not labelled, but it does go through the centre of the circle. And if that line doesn't go through the centre of the circle, then it's not the diameter. The last thing to talk about is pi. Now, pi is a number that tells you how many diameters fit around the circumference of a circle. Now, that number is three and a bit so three point one four one five nine and the numbers continue and it's an irrational number so the decimal places they continue on forever and there's no pattern to decimal places now for most purposes you know 3.1 3.14 is going to be enough you can have a calculator for these questions so you can use your calculator to use a number but again all it means is that you can fit three and a bit diameters around the circumference of a circle. So to calculate question one, the circumference is pi times the diameter. One tip would be to always write out the formula every single time you do a question. And what this is gonna achieve for you is it's gonna help you remember the formula. So pi, the circumference is pi d pi times the diameter. I've not written the multiply sign this way at this time. You don't need to write the multiply sign in algebra. If you've got two symbols next to each other, you just assume it's multiplication. So you'll see it written like this. And then I'm just going to substitute in the values that I've got. So the circumference, we're going to do pi. And we're going to multiply it by the diameter, which is 238. Now you'll notice I didn't actually write down 3.14 and so on for pi. I would have to write quite a long decimal place there, so I've just used a symbol still. But I am showing my work, you know, by showing I'm multiplying pi by the diameter, and I've written down the numbers for the diameter. And you should do this on your exam paper to get all the marks. So that's going to give us a final answer, and that's giving me 747 point and then at a decimal place on my calculator I've got six nine nine zero five one five five four four and because pi is irrational it's got an infinite number of decimal places with no pattern to them it'll just seem like random numbers then any answer will also have that same thing now sometimes an exam paper will give you a number to round to I'm just going to round these answers to one decimal place but you might be asked to round them, for example, two decimal places. So if we've got 0.699, I'm just going to write 0.7, and that'll be centimetres. And it's nothing like centimetres squared, because we've only multiplied pi by one lot of centimetres. So we only had one centimetres in the calculation, the 238. So it's a length that we've found the circumference. It's not an area. So now moving on to question two, I'm going to write down the formula, the circumference is pi times the diameter, writing that down to remind us of the formula, so it helps, helps us to learn it. I'm going to write down the calculation, I'm going to write on the calculator, which would be pi, we use the pi button on the calculator, multiplied by one, five, 
five two. So I'm going to type that in, and I'm going to write the answer to one decimal place. So I'm getting four hundred and seventy seven, and it's point five two. So that'd be point five centimeters. Moving on to question three. So again, write down the formula. The circumference is equal to pi times diameter. Then substitute. Not substituting for pi because we have a pi button on the calculator, so we'll use that for maximum accuracy. And the diameter is 196. So we type that into the calculator and we get our answer. So I'm getting 615. We're going to one decimal place, so I've got a 7 and a 5 as the decimal place. So I want to write the 7 down, but the numbers after is a 5, so we're going to round that up. Not sure about your rounding, by the way. Go and have a look at the rounding videos. So 615.8 centimetres. Question four, same process. The circumference is equal to pi times the diameter. We are going to substitute. So we are doing pi multiplied, and it's 160 in this question. So we're going to write pi times 160 on the calculator. And I'm getting 502 point. And to one decimal place, it's 0.65. So the second numbers are five, so I'm going to round it up. So I'll write 0.7. That's in centimetres. Now for the final question. So we've got, again, write down the formula. The circumference is equal to pi times diameter. Substitute. We'll be keeping pi. We've got a button for that. A diameter is 224. We're going to type that into our calculator. And the answer is 703. And it's 0.71, so that'll be 0.7. And the units will be in centimetres. So find the circumference for circle. It's all about remembering the formula and then knowing which numbers to substitute into the formula. Moving on to the medium question, it doesn't look like there's much difference. So let's look at the formula again. So we've got the circumference is equal to pi multiplied by the diameter. So I'm just going to identify those parts on the diagram. So again, the whole point of this question is to find the circumference, which is the outside line of the circle, which I'm colouring in pink to show you. Yeah, very similar to saying the perimeter of the circle. Now, the diameter, we looked at the diameter on the previous questions. It's very important not to get this wrong. The diameter is from one edge of the circle. It goes through the middle of the circle and it continues to the other side. And while it's not labelled, again, it's got to go through the centre of the circle. Now, what has been labelled on the circle is not the diameter. The 107 centimetres only goes halfway. So because it only goes halfway, it's not a diameter. So what is it? Well, it's what we call the radius. And the radius is the same thing as a diameter, but it only goes halfway. So when we're talking about a radius... Because it's half of a diameter, we say that two radiuses are equal to one diameter. So how does this affect our question? So again, I'm always going to write down the formula first. It's going to help you to memorize it. So the circumference is equal to pi multiplied by the diameter. We don't have the diameter. We've got the radius. So we're going to work out what the diameter is. The diameter is going to be equal to two lots of the 107. So the diameter is going to be equal to 214. So now we can substitute. So the circumference is equal to pi multiplied by 214 and we can type that into a calculator and we're going to get an answer and the answer is 672.3
rounding to one decimal place. And our units working in centimeters. So basically, we've got one extra piece of working out where we are working out what the diameter is, and then we substitute into the formula as normal. So let's have a look at question two. So again, let's write in the formula. The circumference is equal to pi multiplied by the diameter. We don't have a diameter in the diagram. The, di the diameter is equal to two lots of the radius. The radius is halfway across and 118 is halfway across the circle. So two times 118 will give us the diameter. So we can type that into a calculator and that will give us 236. So then we're working out what the circumference is. We're going to substitute it. We've got all the values we need. We've got pi on our calculator. The diameter we now know is 236. So multiplying those together, again, we're going to type it into a calculator. And that is going to give us 700 and 41.4 rounding to one decimal place and we're working again in centimeters let's try that with question three so again write down the formula the circumference is equal to pi times diameter the diameter is equal to two lots of the radius and we've got a radius it's 112 that means our diameter is equal to 224. So now we can substitute into the formula. Pi is on the calculator. The diameter we now know is 224. So we're going to type that in. And that should give you an answer of 703.7. Centimeters. Question four the circumference is equal to pi times the diameter. Again, we don't have a diameter, we've got a radius, so the diameter would be two lots of the radius, and that's going to give us 152. So now we know the diameter, we can substitute in pi is on our calculator. We've worked at 152 for the diameter, so we type that in, and it should give you an answer of 477.5. And again, still working in centimetres. Now, so far, we've done each question in two steps on a GCC exam paper. I would expect you to go into detail and to show both steps. But what happens if we want to speed things up a little bit? Well, we can do this in one step. And what we can say is the circumference is equal to pi multiplied by. Now, a diameter is equal to two radiuses. So what we can do is we can multiply it by two lots of the radius in our formula. Now, we don't normally write multiply signs in algebra, and we normally put whole numbers at the front. And everything's being multiplied together. So what we could say is that we've got two lots of pi r. So we're multiplying by pi, that's in the middle. We're multiplying by two, we've got that at the start. And we're multiplying by the radius, we've got that at the end. And it doesn't matter in which order you multiply things together. So this is the way you'll see that formula written. And what we can do with this is we can substitute in right from the start. So when we're finding the circumference, on your calculator, you'll type in two multiplied by pi, multiplied by 82. And that should give you exactly the same answer as if you did it in two steps. So let's type that into the calculator. And you should get, as an answer, 515.2 centimetres. 
Now, if you do that and do the shortcut and do it in one step rather than two steps, it's all going to depend on how many formulas you can remember, how confident you feel with the topics, and perhaps you tackle the really highest level of work. You are going to get questions with circles involved in lots of other things, and you might want to work a little bit more quickly and use up less space on the page so you've got more space for working out on other things. So it kind of depends on what level you're working at on if you're going to do a two-step, which I would recommend, or a one-step, which is more to remember. Now, moving on to the herd questions, we've got some very odd looking shapes, but we can see curves involved. So they look similar to circles. So whenever you see a curved edge, you know the circle formulas are going to be involved somehow. So I'm going to write them down. So for question one, I know for sure, given the curved edge, that we are going to have to use, I'm um, find the perimeter, which is similar to the circumference. So the circumference is equal to pi multiplied by d. I know I'm going to need to use that formula. And that is because we have got the curved edge, which I'm highlighting in pink. Now, we're not going to bother too much about how we're actually going to figure out this shape. We're just going to use what we know. So we know how to use the circumference is pi d. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to substitute in. So we've got pi on a calculator display. And we do have the diameter on the diagram. It's 160. And that diameter, it does go from one side of the circle to the other side of the circle. I know the circle's not complete. And it's not labeled, but this is going through the center of a circle. If we imagine it went all the way around, I'm just going to do a dashed line to show that this circle would in theory continue around. So that blue line is actually the diameter. So the circumference of an imaginary circle, which I've just completed with a dotted line, would be pi times 160. And we're just going to work that out first. So that's going to give me 502.65. And I'm, I've not finished my calculations. This won't be a final answer. So I'm not going to write it to one decimal place. I'm going to write it to three decimal places, just in case I need to round again later on. So 64655. Now, I found the kind of dotted pink highlighted circle, but is that what I've actually got? Now, the perimeter line that we've got, the solid line is only half of it. So I only want half of the circumference. So what I need to do now is I need to find the circumference of just half of it. So the label, what I'm doing, I'm finding the curved edge. And what I'm going to do is divide the 502 number by 2 to find half, which gives me 251.327. I'll still work with three decimal places because I'm not 100% sure yet what my final answer is going to be. Now, some students will write that down as the final answer. But if we look back at the diagram now, what I've highlighted in pink is what we've actually found. And we want to find the perimeter, we have to find all the way around the edge of the shape. But we haven't kind of enclosed a shape. We still have the straight line. We've got the 160 centimetres. And what we need to do now is if we added on the 160 centimetres, then we're going to enclose the entire shape and we are actually going to have the perimeter. So let's add those together. So we had 251.327 for the curved edge, and we've got 160 for the straight edge. And if we add those together, we'll be getting our final answer. So I'm going to add on the tenths. We're we'll rounding this point, add on the units. Add the tens, carrying the one, and then add the hundreds. So the two, the one, and the one will give us a four. So that's 411.3 centimeters. And what I've done is I've just rounded the calculation here so I haven't used the two or the seven. Because I'm just going to write my answer to one decimal place. 
Now let's try the same method for question two. So we have a curved edge, so we know that we're going to use the circumference is equal to pi d. And we're going to work that out. We're not going to worry too much about the rest of the question just yet. So we're going to do pi multiplied by 170. And that'll give us a value for the circumference of a full circle with those dimensions. So that's going to give me 500 and 34.07. And if I round it to three or four places, I'll have to get around that to a one. Now, once we've done that, we're going to think about what we actually have. Now, we've found the curved edge, which I'm highlighting, and we can see the curved edge is only half of that shape. So I need to divide it by two, and we're going to write down what the curved edge is. So it is 267.035, so we're going to one decimal place, so it'll be 0 0.0 to one decimal place. Now we haven't enclosed a shape, we're trying to find the perimeter. So we've got the straight line, and the straight line has a measurement, it's 170 centimetres, it's a diameter. So we're going to add on the diameter. Make sure you line up the hundreds, tens, and units carefully so we don't make any mistakes. And I'm going to do a column addition. You could use your calculator for this. We have the calculator for pi after all. So it's going to give us a 7 plus 0 is 7. 6 plus 7 is 13. Carry the 1. And 2, 1, and 1 is 4. So it's going to give us 437.0 centimetres. I don't need to write the point zero. So the perimeter of the shape is 437. Now, question three looks different, but we're going to follow the same method. We can see there is a curve involved, so we're going to definitely be using a circle formula. So it's going to be C equals pi D. We're going to work it out. So we have pi on our calculator. And we don't have a diameter because, again, if you can't see it, just imagine we have a full circle. So we have the curved edge that we do have, and then the circle continues. And I've got a rough diagram here, but it's going to look something like that. And you can see we've only got a quarter of the circle. And so the 112 centimetres is only going about halfway across. So that's actually a radius. So we'll need some additional working out. So the diameter is equal to two lots of the radius, which would be two lots of 112, which would be equal to 224. So pi is being multiplied by 224. So circumference of a full circle would be pi times 224, which should give you 703.717, if we round to three or so places. So that would be a full circle. Now, thinking about it, we don't have a full circle. What we've actually got here is a quarter circle. So to find one quarter of a circle, we're going to have to divide by four. And that means a curved edge is going to give us 175.9 centimetres. So now I'm going to one decimal place because I'm not close to the answer. Now, looking at these straight edges, we've got the 112 centimetres. But you might notice in this shape, we've got two of the straight edges. Now, there's no label on a second straight edge, but because it's a quarter circle, if one of the straight edges is a radius, the other straight edge will also be a radius. So it's going to be another 112. So we're going to add together the quarter circumference. We're going to add together the two radiuses, and this will give us our final answer. So we can add up the tenths add up the units, add up the tens, and add up the hundreds. That's give us 399.9 .9 centimetres as our final 
answer. Moving on to question four. Okay, it looks different again. We can see a curved edge, so we're going to stick with. We're going to find the circumference of a full circle, which would be pi d. We're going to try and substitute. Pi is on our calculator. And again, we don't have a diameter. We have a radius. So if our radius is 84 centimetres, then the diameter is equal to two lots of that radius. That's going to be equal to 168. So we're going to do pi multiplied by 168. So the biggest place you go wrong with these questions is getting the diameter and the radius mixed up, and you'll be given a random one of them. So sometimes you have to times by two, sometimes you don't. You need to make that decision. So pi times 168 is going to give us 527.788 to three decimal places. Okay, I'm just using more accuracy in my working out, and I'll drop down to one decimal place in the answer. It'll just help us avoid rounding errors. Now, looking at the curved edge of the circle that we've got, we don't have a full circle. We've got a quarter circumference, another quarter circumference, so a half circumference, and then another quarter circumference. So we've got three quarters of the circumference. So to find three quarters of a number, we're going to divide by four and multiply by three. So dividing by the denominator and multiplying by the numerator. We can have a look at the fractions questions, get an idea of how that works. Alternatively, you could divide by four to find one quarter, and then you can multiply that by three to get three quarters. So there's a few different methods of thinking about it. So I'm going to write down what three quarters is. It is 395.8 centimetres. Now, have I enclosed the entire shape? Well, I've not. We've got the straight edges. So we need the 84, but we see we still haven't enclosed the entire shape and we've got one more straight edge. Now, just like the quarter circles, this is another radius. So we need to add on another 84. And we had all of that up, we are going to get our answer. Again, feel free to use a calculator. So our final answer is we 500 and 63.8 centimetres for the perimeter of the shape. Now, for the final question. Now, we've been doing this in multiple steps again. So we've had a step for the diameter, we need it. We've got a step for the curved edge. We've got a step where we divide the curved edge if we need to, to find uh, smaller fractions of circles. And then we add on any straight edges, quite a lot of steps. Now we can reduce these steps if you're feeling confident. So for example, the curved edge of question five is going to be three quarters of pi times D. Because I can see it's three quarters of a circle. So you can include three quarters in your original calculation to skip that step. Also with this question, we don't have a diameter, we've got a radius, and we know that a radius is, a, di a diameter is two radiuses. So actually, we can say we've got two radiuses instead of a diameter. So you can put all of this on one line of your calculator. So on your calculator, use the fraction button to write in three quarters. You can multiply that by pi. You can multiply that by two. You can multiply that by the radius. And so we're doing kind of three steps all at once here. So the radius was 117. If you type that all into your calculator, you should be getting 551.349. And then the small decimal places, we'll cut it off after three. We'll round to one decimal place later on. So what we found here is the curved edge of this shape, and it's three quarters of the way around. Now we still have two straight edges. So we've got the radius 100 
and we've got a second radius and now I've enclosed a shape. So let's add all of this up. So we had the 551. Now finishing off, let's round it to one decimal place. So that'll be 0.3. We've got the 117 and another 117. We're going to add all of that together. Feel free to use your calculator to do this. I'm just going to add up the tenths, add up the units, and 85.3 centimetres as your final answer. Now it's important to note for the majority of GCC questions, if you're just finding something just like just the perimeter, then do the work you might see in the first four questions and always have one step at a time, making it very clear to the examiner what you're doing at every single stage. So if you do make a mistake, you are going to get lots and lots of marks. Now in question five, we're combining steps together. That's something you really should only be doing if your work on maybe a grade nine question, grade eight question, and there's lots of other things going on. So be very careful on which kind of working out you're going to use depending on your confidence level and the grade question you're working at. Ouch! This is when somebody is, I've explained scratches.